800-700-8229 is the number to call. You're listening to Altmeyer Financial Radio. Our goal is to help you get a better outcome for your income. We've got David Morgan in the studio today. David is an internationally sought-after speaker and educator. He is a dynamic, much-in-demand speaker all over the globe and is a widely recognized analyst in the precious metals industry and consults for hedge funds, high-net-worth investors, mining companies, depositories, and bullion dealers. David is the publisher of the Morgan Report on Precious Metals and author of The Silver Manifesto. You can find that at thesilvermanifesto.com. David's a featured speaker at Honest Money Investment Conferences all over the world. David considers himself a big picture macroeconomist whose main focus is to educate people about honest money and the benefits of a sound financial system. As publisher of the Morgan Report, David has appeared on Bloomberg, CNBC, Fox Business, and BNN in Canada. David has been interviewed by publications such as the Wall Street Journal, Futures Magazine, The Gold Report, and numerous others. Additionally, David provides information by video, radio, and interview. Some of his speaking and most of his public domain written work can be found at themorganreport.com. David, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here again. So, David, you were one of the keynote speakers at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference. What did you learn up there or what did you share or talk about? Or Sure. It seems like, to me, like... Um, you know, the metals market, precious metals market now has some movement, and but yeah. Well, Dave, as you know, uh, the resource conference covers all resources, and you know, what's the hot resource right now? Lithium, cobalt seems to be one, uh, vanadium. So all these uh, metals get covered at the show, and of mm. course, almost everybody talks about gold and silver. So on this particular one, what I taught people was something that very, very few know about. And that is how some of these billionaire financiers got to be so wealthy investing in the resource sector. And what Uh I explained was how seed financing goes into first round financing and second round financing. And that these investors basically are not any smarter than the general public that studied in the resource sector. They just have a distinct advantage because they get in on a network of people that have the ability to start at the very, very bottom. I mean, most of us think Mm -hmm. that a ground floor opportunity is absolutely the beginning start. Man, I've got a ground floor opportunity. I can get in now, Uh and it's going to go up, up, up. And Uh not all ground floor opportunities go up. Some go sideways, some go down, some fail. Yeah. However, there's a round before that called C financing. So that's like getting in before the ground floor opportunity. So I went through the whole hierarchy of how a company starts from a seed financing all the way through be- to where it becomes, let's say, an IPO, for an example. Uh-huh. And the advantage that the insiders have for getting in the seed financing, you know, the first or second round. And this is something that most of the people, it's kind of a hidden secret. I mean, you don't hear a lot about it talked about by these guys that are uh, very, very well known in the industry Mm -hmm. and they're in in the billionaire class. And so I talked about it. I let people know about it. And then I went on to talk about um, there are opportunities, even with, uh, let's say, a subset like myself that come along once in a while. We have a very interesting speculation that took me two years of due diligence before I ever wrote word one about it. And it's got a spin out on something that could be, I won't say would be, could be a changer, a game changer in the electronic waste industry. Huh. So when you were talking about the billionaires, are you talking about, are they purchasing mines? Are they buying hard uh, gold? Is it miners? Miners being uh, gold stock with companies or what? Yeah, it's primarily resource stocks across the board, but that's mostly gold and silver stock. But again, you know, there's all kinds of resource stocks uh-huh. out there, potash, uh, you know, lithium, as I said, and that type of thing. So what happens is they get in early and on a seed round, they might get in at uh, five cents a share, as an example, it goes up to 25 cents. So before even the ground floor opportunity, they're already 500% ahead. Well, uh-huh. in your business, Dave, you know, you don't get 500% all that easily, but in these types mm-hmm. of situations, they do. Now, to be fair, yeah. you know, some fail. So, you know, some, but, to, but it's a distinct advantage, especially if you can repeat it again and again and again. And so, this is something that's made it, uh, you know, something that people were 
becoming aware about. There's mm-hmm. a few people that know about it, but most think that these guys have some superior software program uh-huh. or something like that that allows them to do better than the average investor. That's not true. You were saying 500%, and I was reading an article that the S&P 500 is up a blistering 240% since March 2009 lows. However, based on current pricing, or what we call P.E. ratios, only the peak of 2000 during the dot-com bubble created more overvalued market than the current one. Yeah, I'm a little uh, cautious in the stock market, always have been. I'm not a bear, I mean, and I like to look at individual companies, but the overall market as a whole, in fact, I just got this question is, our premium members can write me and one of me, my, myself, or one of our staff guarantees mm-hmm. them an answer. And he said, you know, look at the chart, and I do that technical work as well as fundamental. And basically, it's in what's called a distribution pattern. And I can I can explain it on the radio, but basically, it's a channel formation or a long straight line. And uh, this is definitely the distribution panel or uh, pattern that is the smart money is selling off at a high to the unwary public because mm-hmm. they can't sell it all at once to drive the market down. So right. they have to distribute the stock over time. And there's a definite pattern formation that you're very familiar with. It's something that very few people, again, it's kind of an inside secret that's uh, open, but not many people know about it. I've uh, taught that for years as well. So mm-hmm. I am thinking, hey, we could go m- several months, but I'll bet you before the end of this year, 2017, we're going to see a low you know, we're going to see the market down, not up. Yeah, we have been getting a, a lot of interest of uh, people getting out of the stock market. If you have a 401k and you're age 60, you can, in most cases, uh, do an in-service distribution, roll it over to an IRA, um, or, you know, we put it somewhere where you're not going to lose it in the stock market. But if the market goes up, you get rewarded. And uh, if you need a, gu- a good guaranteed, um, you know, income up to 6%, depending on, you know, your age and stuff. That's what we do. Yeah, I like that approach because you really you have to diversify. And most people think they're diversified with stocks and bonds. They're very, very highly correlated together. So mm-hmm. what you provide, Dave, is something that really does give them a diversification and a higher safety factor. Yeah. David, Dave, sorry to interrupt, but we've got to prepare for a quick break. Hey, our number, 800-700-8229. 800-700-8229. Give that number a call to set up a meeting with Dave Altmeyer, and he can answer your questions about retirement and help you with that. Two locations, one in Coeur d'Alene at 4th and Front Street in downtown Coeur d'Alene near the Coeur d'Alene Resort, and also in downtown Spokane in the Davenport Tower on the penthouse floor. Uh, two locations, uh, give give us a call, 800-700-8229. Uh, AltmeyerFinancial.com is the website. Go there and check it out. We're going to have more with David Morgan, Dave Altmeyer, and Steve Forbes right after these messages. Dr. Jones and his wife, Ann, would like to share their experience with Altmeyer Financial Group. I'm a physician. We've lived in Spokane for the better part of 30 years. My wife, Ann, and I both work. We're in our late 50s. We wanted to look at some options that kind of eliminate some of the whims of the stock market. The part that's invested with the program that Dave talked about is dependable, and that feels nice. I've already referred a coworker and a friend to Dave, so I'm very comfortable suggesting that other people see them primarily because I think they'll have the same experience we did. Thank you for your kind words. We appreciate you working with Altmeyer Financial Group. Give us a call, 800-700-8229, 800-700-8229. Altmeyer Financial Group. <laughs> Welcome back to Altmeyer Financial Radio. Our goal is to help you get a better outcome for your income. 800-700-8229 is the number to call if you hear something interesting, want to set an appointment with Dave Altmeyer. 800-700-8229. Steve Forbes, you've got a question for David. Hey, Dave, looking at your book, The Second Chance, by the way, great book. Uh, everybody should sit down and read it, grab it. Where can you get it at? Well, you can get it at Amazon, of course. Lulu also is a publisher. You get it at Lulu. Or you can get it online. Uh, There's an uh, e-book version as well. And, of course, most of the uh, gold shows that I attend, I also bring these a case with me. So it's uh, Second Chance with Dave Smith and Dave Morgan. Uh, There's a quote in here by Jim Rickards, and it's along the following lines, and I won't 
do the whole thing. But the time to act is now. The new crisis is a mathematical certainty, but I can take it further. What you haven't heard is that it will be exponentially larger than any financial panic in the past. The next time, the Fed is going to be in trouble. They're already insolvent on a mark-to-market basis. Maybe you can explain that. And each bailout gets much larger than the one before. The Fed currently has a 10-foot seawall, but the next one's going to be a tsunami of 50 feet. Awesome. That's true. I mean, Steve, as you know, we talked off air that uh, the debt situation is a mathematical certainty. You cannot pay this off. So there's several ways. You know, all debts get paid in a fashion, which means that, uh, you know, if you loaned your uncle five grand and he can't pay you and he can give you, you know, 50 cents on the dollar, or maybe he'll just drop the debt down. Maybe he'll leave town or die. I mean, it, but debts end up getting cleared at some point. Do you have an extra $19.9 trillion? The other thing, not well, it depends. In Zimbabwe, I do, and I need change. You know, so it depends what the currency we're talking about. And that's the last point: is it's usually hyperinflated away. In fact, history has shown this. Took a study of about the whole summer. Any time you've been in an unsound, unbacked, which means fiat currency system, they've always hyperinflated the currency rather than you know make good on the debt in some fashion or not, which is quite scary when you think about it, because if you're holding bonds uh, or even near-term treasury bills, you're looking at something that could depreciate rather rapidly, and this is where the run to gold will really start in a big way. Well, we have a mountain of debt, uh, absolutely. Unfunded liabilities is somewhere around $104 trillion the last time I looked at it. For those that follow it, take a look at uh, www usdebtclock.com. It's always uh, fun, and it's very interactive. Steve, I'm glad you brought up the uh, debt clock, because there's a section on there in gold and silver. And what's interesting, if you look at the silver price, it's like $1,000 an ounce. And it's like, what? And what they've done is, on that debt clock that has displays of a lot of things, it shows what the paper printing has been versus the production of silver. So if you look at a constant silver price basis, the inflation of of uh, the money supply, M1, what it basically is telling you is that they have inflated the amount of printed money by a factor of basically a thousand. But if you go back to 1964, the last time that silver circulated as money in the United States, it was $1.29 per ounce. And now, according to this debt clock, again, it's a thousand. So we have had more inflation than most people really recognize, and the market really hasn't accounted for it yet. At some point, like in 1980, the markets will account for the amount of printing that's taken place. I'm looking at you with incredulation because last week we reported that the Fed said that inflation was 1.7%. Well, I'd like to know, Steve, if your health care costs are 1.7%. I'd like to know if your home insurance is 1.7%, your food costs. You know, it's interesting. I got to just get into my little personal history. <laughs> because when my f- oldest girl went to Whitworth, uh, and that's as expensive as Gonzaga out there for you Gonzaga fans. And I love Gonzaga, by the way. Uh, that first semester, I wrote the check. The next semester, it was a 21% increase in one semester. Oh, that just, that just hurts. I, I can see it. And I love it when you say, well, it's only going to cost you $33,000 a year. Well, you know, you have to make almost 40% more than that. So it costs you 50, you know, so it's uh, the cost of an education is uh, it's, that's a whole different show. We'll do that another time. Uh, Social Security, by the way, we've talked about that last couple weeks. Uh, it went up a, a whole whopping uh, a third of 1%. So, Well, this financial repression is basically what it's called in, uh, in financial terms. And what they do, they, meaning the federal government, is they put interest rates at an extraordinarily low place. And this allows them to keep all of these items that they're responsible for, like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, whatever, at a low rate. So the Social Security recipients are basically getting uh, getting had because they're not paying the true inflation rate. We're often talking about with Dave uh, tools that he's got in his tool bag in order to try to uh, secure 
the the capital, the funds, and minimize the risk tolerance. What type of pet? What type of silver uh, trading goes on, or silver packages are available that might uh, minimize risk? Well, Steve, uh, we just met recently, and so my my main premise from the start, and I was uh, asked to write the Ten Rules of Silver Investing and Investing Rules book, which is a book hardbound, and it's like the 150 top investors in the world. I certainly wouldn't put myself in that class, but there aren't many silver experts. And they were asked in their specialties. I was asked about silver. And what I said was that no one wants to be a prophet of doom, but in an all-out monetary collapse, be it temporary or longer term, that silver is the money of last resort. As much as people tout gold as being money, and it is, history shows, and Milton Friedman explained this at one of the conferences many, many years ago in New Orleans, the most important gold show at the time, that silver is the monetary metal of the world. If you think about it, it's true, because we were all on a silver standard at one point. Gold, certainly money, and it's for large transactions, but Mm -hmm. silver is the money of the people for everyday transactions. So if you have physical metal, you will be able to use it as a purchasing agent anywhere in the world, if the electronic system goes down, if there's an ATM closure, if there's an event. You know, we talk a a lot about the uh, U.S. economy and stock market, Um, but it's kind of interesting if you take a look at China right now. In uh, November and December, they have been selling U.S. treasuries at a record pace because people in China want to get their money out side of China. Yeah, that's a great insight, Dave. I mean, Steve was alluding to it as well. Basically, what I call is the old maid. I mean, basically, at some point, the U.S. dollar is going to be something that people don't want. And then there's going to be a rush to get rid of it. And what do you get rid of it into? And the problem is there's so many trillions of dollars in the debt market, you really can't go into gold. I mean, those mm-hmm. people can't go into gold. There's just too much paper chasing a very, very small precious metal. So the only game that's in town for all the banking elites right now is whose debt do you buy? And I have a different theory than almost everybody out there. I think the reason that the interest rates are going up, one, the market's pressuring interest mm-hmm. rates up. The Fed doesn't control as much as most people think. But secondly, if we're at positive interest rates and all these other entities are at a negative interest rates, people are going to seek the higher yield, which is why you're seeing more and more come into the U.S. dollar than right. would be otherwise. So I'm, not, so I'm going to yes. add a bit. Mm-hmm. China wants out. They're getting out even though it's a positive interest rate. And this will take place through other nation states. Mm-hmm. But because it's a positive rate, it's, it's mitigating that run out of the dollar. Gentlemen, we've got to take a quick break. 800-700-8229 is the number to call. More with David Morgan right after this. Here's another satisfied Altmaier Financial Group client, and she'd love to share her story. Well, I met Dave when I first came to town, and Dave worked with my first employer, with the executives there as an investment advisor, and I continued that relationship after I left that company because Dave had done a great job in sitting down with me and listening to where I was in my life and understanding my life circumstance with, you know, my children, my husband and my age at that time and the funds that I would have available to me that would be coming out of 401k money because I was moving from an employer And I didn't necessarily want just to roll it into another 401k and make all those independent investment choices myself. I mean, it's great to have tons and tons of funds available to you, but when you don't have somebody there kind of really telling you what they're all about, it can be difficult even for somebody who who has a career in, in financial services like myself. So it was really helpful to have Dave sit down with me and listen to that and help me to lay out an investment strategy that would make sense with my goals and my dreams, if you will, you know, we older people still have those and my hopes for my children. And from time to time we would meet and and Dave would, we would review what was going on my, in my investment portfolio. And there were times though, that Dave would proactively reach out to me. But every time Dave has come to me, it's turned out really well. So, uh, you know, knock wood thus far with Dave, 15 years, uh, it's gone really, really well. And he listens well And he is uh, very responsive to the needs that I outlined. Elaine, thanks so much for sharing your story. We appreciate you being a client of Altmaier Financial Group. To set an appointment, call 800-700-8229. 800-700-8229. 
Welcome back to Altmeyer Financial Radio. Our goal is to help you get a better outcome for your income. 800-700-8229 is the number to call. We're here with David Morgan. So, David, we were uh, talking about the challenges with China, and so they're selling U.S. treasuries to help prop up their uh, currency. And, you know, we no longer, we don't live in an island, so if one major country has a problem, it's going to affect us, right? Exactly. I mean, Dave, you couldn't have said it better. Look, I started in uh, the public domain in the early 2000, and I said what worried me so much is my study of monetary history. And this is the first time that the reserve currency is a worldwide phenomenon. The U.S. dollar is still the reserve currency of the world, so as mm-hmm. the dollar goes, so goes the whole world. And there's really no way out of it. Of course, the BRICS have tried to mitigate it with right. their... Uh, Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, and they backed out. Maybe they can mitigate it somewhat, but basically, as you said, as this trading situation, and it's getting redefined daily now with Trump in the White House, and I'm not saying pro or con, all I'm saying it's changing, and a lot of people that were uh, in a position of having some knowledge of what they thought the future hold, really, that's up in the air right now. So there's a lot of shifting and changing that is going to take place over the next few years, and this is something that this global economy is going to be stress-tested at, as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's uh, with China, you read, and it's this one China policy. What the one China policy is, is that they include Taiwan. So what Trump's talking about when he's talking about, he's like, he wants to take the phone calls, whatever, and separate them. And you got to remember, Trump is the art of the deal. So he's putting that carrot out there and using it to negotiate with them getting out of the ocean, building, you know, fake islands and help with North Korea and also their currency. I don't think they can do a lot with their currency, Um, but that's he's got the Chinese nervous. But that's, you know, when you're talking about one uh, China policy, that's like saying that you're going to treat California as a separate nation. Yes, it's, it, we're all interconnected. Let's face it. I mean, I was asked about, you know, the movement of gold uh, to China, and I pointed out that uh, who, as an Austrian economist, it's the means of production. That's wealth. It's not gold. Gold might be a store of wealth. And so what you've seen throughout history is when the main producer of the world is producing, that's where the gold is. And that was what happened in the United Kingdom for years. And then after World War II, the United States became the main center of means of production. All the gold, a great majority of it went to the United States. Now China has been the main means of production and the gold has flown to China. This is not mystery science. This is just the way it works. So it's not surprising. And why gold? Well, because gold is the money of last resort. That's why. You know, it's interesting. I have worked with the executives at CORE, used to be Coeur d'Alene Mines. And I remember reading an article and they said, well, CORE is just taking, uh, you know, buckets and out of of their mining and just shipping it to China. So I was I was asking the um, one of the executives there how that works. And they said, yeah, they just. They just bring it out and they pay so much for, you know, let's call it a big, huge crate. And you don't know how much is in there, but that's what they're paying. And then they take it out from Alaska and ship it directly to China. It's really kind of interesting. It's really difficult to get exact numbers. I mean, because so much... uh concentrate goes into China and it gets uh, smelted down and refined. And the reason for it is, one, they do it cheaply. Secondly, they don't have the EPA requirements that everybody else has. So when they join the World Trade Organization, they got a real big benefit that no one else has. I'm not saying I'm for this. I'm not. In fact, CORE is one of the best in the world as far as mitigating mines and making them very pristine and doing things very ethically and uh, and environmentally friendly. China doesn't have to, so they can do it cheaper. Dave, is that slurry? No, it's actually concentrated. The call con is what it's called, yeah. Okay. China's always very interesting, but let's get back to your book, The Second Chance. Uh, one of the things that I found interesting in reading it is that you've indicated that 90% of the profit comes at the tail end of the segment, of the business segment of this. So I, I, I'd like you to speak to that. And then, even more intriguing is the timing of how you get out. I, I saw the tiered approach to that, and that was very intriguing. 
So maybe you can start on that. And then we'll get to page 147. Okay, well, I said 90% of the move comes in the last 10% of the time. This is exactly what happened in the last bull market <clears throat> all the way through 1980. And a lot of markets move this way. There's an acceleration phase. In fact, I remember looking at the business page in the LA Times talking about how big the move in the NASDAQ was. And it was up to about the 2000 level. It all went to 5000 on the first move up. So things accelerate exponentially. That's point one. The other part is how to get out. Most retail investors buy and hold. They get married to these stocks and they think they can only go up. No, everything goes up and down. So, what we try to teach in the book is several strategies that you make good profit. Maybe not try to pick the top. That's an amateur's game. I want everyone to realize you've got to be satisfied with your profits. And as a long time futures trader, I know to sell in the strength. Do not sell after the top. You're going to wreck yourself. One of your, speaking of uh, exit strategies, you've got here, number one, uh, the sandwich trader. What is that? Well, this is a fascinating one, the sandwich trader. This came from Forbes magazine, and it was a guy that had traded commodities fairly successfully for years, and he stopped. He had a really bad year, and so he stopped and and studied for one year, didn't make a single trade. Uh And what he determined was he took the middle out, and that's the sandwich trader. So what he did is he waited for silver to start its acceleration. He got in at about 15, which at the time was an all-time high in 1980. Uh And then he got out at about 35, and that was about a week and a half trade. And it went all the way to 50, but he took a big chunk out of the middle. He retired. He was done trading commodities for the rest of his life. So I just love that story, and it's something that most people don't think about because you can get rich quick. I'm not advocating that. Mm -hmm. It's a very leveraged, very highly tough thing to do, but it can be done. So I wanted to put that in the book. Yeah, I have a friend, and he looks for opportunities. He he would not be a gold bug, but he's... If he sees an opportunity, he buys it. So, like, he's in into gold. But when you get a little bit of a run up, he'll take the profits. Like he got out in July. So, Absolutely, yeah. you know, I'm free market. I mean, anyone guys wants to trade these markets, do whatever they want with them, fine. Philosophically, I think everyone should own a little gold and silver physically for the reasons I outlined earlier on your uh-huh. show. What's the uh, laddering out strategy? This is a good one because it instills discipline to the investor or speculator. Basically, what you do is you have a set place where you're going to exit the market with part of your winnings. And as it goes higher, a little more, and as it goes higher, a little more, and as it goes higher, a little more. So it's a way to get out without saying, oh, I have to pick the exact top. Again, trying to pick an exact top or an exact bottom is an amateur's game. This is a professional way and a professional attitude of how to exit our market. Okay. And another one you have is listen to your gut. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, you get to that place where uh, greed takes over, yeah. especially in an accelerating market. And because of that, it, you get that little queasy feeling or it feels too good. You might just do that, you know, that second brain and determine that, you know, maybe, maybe I ought to take something here off the table. Yeah. And sometimes a mistake is like, oh, I want my portfolio to get to 100000 or 200000 So you're hanging on too long and you totally miss it. So. So, David, thank you for being on the show. It's always a treat to have you here. Dave and Dave, this is a very insightful. Honestly, I'd like to get to all of the strategies, all seven of them, but we'll have to do that another day. David Morgan, thank you for being here. We're out of time today. Thank you so much for joining us. 800-700-8229 is the number to call. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye. Another satisfied client of Altmeyer Financial Group is Dr. Jim Goff. Hi, I'm Jim. I am a physician here in Spokane with Rockwood Clinic. Well, I first met Dave early on when I first came to Spokane. He's very knowledgeable about his business and he is patient and willing to do things on your time and not on his. Probably most would agree that some diversification across maybe uh, several different types of products or approaches is appropriate and Oh, I would certainly recommend Dave to my colleagues, friends, to at least take a look and see what he has that might help them in retirement planning. Dr. Goff, thank you for your kind words. We appreciate you working with Altmeyer Financial Group. Give us a call, 800-700-8229, 800-700-8229. Altmeyer Financial Group. The information contained herein is not intended to be and shall not constitute an offer to sell nor the solicitation of any offer to buy any security. Content is provided for information purposes only and is not to be treated as advice to make any specific investment. Please consult with an independent investment advisor before making an investment decision.